get to know a little bit about a person, you're much less likely to dismiss them or disagree with them without actually understanding what that disagreement is. Um, so that idea that relationship building matters, how relationship, how relationship building happens is very contextual. So if I'm working with a bunch of programmers, it's going to look differently than a bunch of crop scientists. It's going to be different than a group of social workers. It's going to be different than a group of moms. It's going to be different than a very multicultural group versus a homogeneous group. So, you know, I, I used to have a pretty narrow view of what socializing meant online, and I've really realized that it's much broader, and it's broader than I can see. And I have to keep expanding my repertoire around that. So the relationship piece is important. Um, I think the alternation between face-to-face -face and online, if you can have it, is fabulous. There are certainly groups who can't have it. So I think there's the equivalent of doing something synchronously between you know, extended periods of asynchronous interaction because there's something about that focused attention in that moment um, of hearing voices, you know, if you're using video or not. I mean, I do meetings at 5 o'clock in the morning, so I don't like video then because, you know, <laughs> um, but that that presence thing helps people bond and I think that's an important aspect of a good functional community building activity. I think the other thing, the third thing is is that there's always going to be a core and a periphery unless you've made an explicit agreement that everybody participates the same way. So um, you have to understand that a community is going to have diverse experiences whether it's face to face or not. And if it's not imperative that everyone have the same experience, then you have to embrace that some people are going to be tightly connected and some aren't. Some are going to come in and out. Some are going to stay at the core. Some are going to you know, go out, have ideas of the places, and bring them back in. And then you start thinking about how do I facilitate those different roles? Um, how do we facilitate? How do we structure our process? How do we structure our technology to accommodate that diversity? Facility to use tools in useful ways does not, it's not always age correlated. It's often in organizations, the higher our people are in the organization, often the less technologically adept or plastic they are. And that isn't an age thing, it's a power thing. They have other people who take care of those things for them and they never, you know, have to do that. Um, when you look at people who are isolated, the technology becomes a huge bridge and a connector. I look at my mom and Facebook. I look at how so many people are using technology to connect with family across distance, um, with people who have shared interests or shared challenges. So the, the age thing is at most something you have to pay attention to on the onboarding process and it should not be the determinant. Um, I work with uh, university students in a university program in the Netherlands every fall and you know frankly they're surprised at how much they don't know about how they can use technology communities and networks in their, their design engineering program they have no idea all these places where they can do crowdsourcing of ideas crowdfunding um, developing a very specialized sort of expertise where you can tap people because they're not in your physical geography um, so we all have things to learn across the board. So that's the age thing. The diversity thing, and particularly the, the, the perspective of gender, I think there's still, the technology industry as a whole is still struggling with gender issues. Um, there are those who have taken it up and are willing to talk about it, and there are those who choose to dismiss it. And I think it's really problematic for for us when there's so many choose to dismiss it and it, they talk about you know for example why are there no women at tech conferences is because there's no women with the skills or they don't return my phone calls or they need a babysitter for goodness sake we can't accommodate that um, and I'm being a little sarcastic here but I think I've also feel I have some as I said to a friend I have some anger around this and some bruises from trying to advocate in the past look at me holding my hand um, I think we have a long way to go, and I think the best way to do it is to, A, encourage young women to be technologists, because we need more women coding, because technology is not value neutral. It is not 
it is influenced by those who program it. You know, you would know that. Lumio knows that. Um, so we really need to encourage women there. What I see often is that women are technology stewards, which I think is interesting because most of them would say, I don't know anything about technology. But they have a, a fearless sense of wanting to support their community, and that gives them a fearlessness to try. And so that's the motivation. When you, when you bring in people who are really very much from the technological point of view and don't have the community experience, I think they struggle in the technology stewardship role because they are not able to balance between the different perspectives. So can women change how technology is used? I, I think absolutely. Is it only women who can do this? No. But I think we have um, disproportionate opportunity. This role is definitely not something that you have to be a woman to do. Um, and I think that the kind of converse is, it, is that, and I think this comes up with the idea that if you bring more diverse people into the room, you can get better thinking. That also increases the need for um, the ability to have critical conversations without destroying relationships. And so, you know, this is a really interesting, I think, gender dynamic. And again, these are stereotypes. But sometimes the men come in and they're right in on the topic. And the women are trying to kind of protect relationship. And I think those roles need to mix more. So we need to be able to have difficult conversations. We need to be able to hold the discomfort. Whereas otherwise, maybe our acculturation as women is to well, make it better. And, you know, that isn't always the best approach. So, you know, there's something to be learned. But if we make this discussable, then it's available and useful versus, you know, why was that person a, mm -mm, and why was she tamping down all the, all the really interesting ideas? We're not trying to be nice here. We're trying to come up with brilliant ideas. You know, these are stereotypes, but they, they're dynamics that show up. Mm -hmm.